Uh, and three. And two. And, and a one. And a one. It's Sunday, May 24th, 2020. I'm Jeff. Uh, Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast with Indeterminate Links, episode number 555. A lot of fives there. And we have right below me... Our, our our col sex therapist, Mister Angelini uh, Edward Angelini Cook. Hey. Hi. Who who is wearing a very nice shirt? Mm-hmm. I'm official, y'all. Yeah, he's I mean, branded. so official. He's got his name in the back. I know. Hold on. I don't know if you can read it. Yeah. yeah. But we get the idea. Mm-hmm. But it looks awesome, and I really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Um, and just to let you know, everybody else is not in Texas. Which is the reason why I'm currently shirtless. So all you podcast listeners, if you ever watch a video, there you go. Although you only see like the shoulders up, so not so much. Anyways, not to sound narcissistic or anything, but I'm hot. <laughs> Anyways, Gary, why do we have our lovely guest? guest here with us today um because so i always have a crush on him oh Aww. that's true so <laughs> congratulations captain obvious let me go get your Nobel. uh so yeah it's um it's memorial day weekend here in the united states um COVID is still going on but you know what's important it's time to reflect on how we can be better people. And one of the ways we could do that is improving our relationships with others. And Ed has so graciously been involved with us for three previous episodes. So we thought we'd have him back again. If you're interested, you can go back to 535, 540, and 547. Because this is part four of the landscape of relationships. Last time we talked about communication. This time we're going to talk about a little emotion called jealousy. Don't everybody applaud at once. Of course we have it. Oh, I realize I'm oh. muted. Fuck me. Ah! <laughs> I can't Why, believe they're not muted. Thanks, David. Were you Why can't sassy? I not be muted? Yes, I was. I was being a little sassy. I was going to say, I wish we had. Well, not sassy, but I wish we had that song, you know, clip of like, "Hey, jealousy." Like, anyway, but that's just me. Anyway, uh, move on, move on, move on, move on. Move on with yeah. So uh, I see here, Ed, that we have some jealousy quotes. Uh, would any of our thespians among us prefer to read these, read one off? Damon, go off. You do it. God. Oh, let me read. Look at this. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Can I do the first on. one? I'm, I I love, love Shakespeare. You can take the first one. Sure, go for it. Beware of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster which doth mock the meat it feeds on. Iago, Othello, William Shakespeare. That was awesome. Way to go. Garrett, you go next. <laughs> to go against stereotype, I will be playing the role of <laughs> Maya Angelou. <laughs> Jealousy in romance is like salt in food. A little can enhance the savor, but too much can spoil the pleasure and, under certain circumstances, can be life-threatening. All right, Damon. 
You got you got the my favorite anthropologist. Oh, that way. Jealousy is not a barometer by which the depth of love can be read. It merely records the degree of the lover's insecurity. Margaret Mead. Yay! Ah. My, my, my. She just served up a whole dose of shade in that one quote. (laughs) She was shady, though. So uh, so you you can imagine this uh, followed by, like, a hair flip or something like that? I don't know. Yeah, actually, it probably would be served with a clack of a fan. <laughs> and a turn on heel, and out she goes. Yeah. That's, no, that's the guy. All well, right, so, so... Oh, so these quotes are in... So the reason why I chose these quotes are that uh, there is a wide range of ways that we can experience jealousy. Um, we'll be talking later about how there is a stigma against jealousy, And, uh, but like, as we can see here that, you know, like jealousy is typically, sometimes we call it like, you know, like I'm, and I'm green with envious, I'm green with envy. Right. So, so, you know, William, Willie shakes talked about the green eyed monster. Uh, Maya Angelou talks about jealousy, um, in like a positive way, right? Like it can be, it can be helpful in some way. Um, and then Margaret Mead talks about like, the fact that jealousy doesn't really say that much about the other person. It really says more to do about the level of insecurity that the person feeling it has. Um, So before we get into this, I did want to kind of talk about um, and review what we talked about a couple, I think in episode two, the part two of this is the cognitive triangle, right? Because since um, jealousy is an emotion or a feeling um, that's going to impact our thoughts and it's also going to impact our behaviors. Um, so, you know, like, like we'll talk about jealousy is not always a bad thing. Um, typically, I think the way that we frame it negatively causes a lot of problems. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's not really something that we need to, um, like frame really negatively and in my practice i kind of look at it as like like a positive way um like that we'll get into um but like how about we talk about emotions so what are emotions Mm. no one's answering (laughs) it is expressions of thoughts and feelings Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's usually what I think of expressions and thoughts and feelings there. Um, how you mentally react to certain situations are not mean not mentally, yeah. but that's well, I don't want to use the word emotions in the definition of <laughs> the word. Well, I, I mean, it's kind of like an, if you think of it as think of it this way, or at least how I like to think of things is is. Uh, the human being has at least three parts, maybe four, debatable on the fourth, but at least three. There's the physical, the mental, and the emotional, or the mind, the body, and the heart. And the feelings is kind of in that heart part, where it's not something that mm-hmm. thinks, but it influences or, or where you're actually thinking. It's just how you're it's this other aspect from that mind, that, that thought process. Logic. So, um, so the way that I kind of talk about emotions are that like, you know, to go back to the cognitive triangle, we, we have, um, we have some, we have, a we have control over our thoughts and we have control over our behaviors, our feelings. We don't really have that much control over because mm. they keep us alive. Um, our emotions are needed in order for us to survive. So our emotions are our reactions to our environmental conditions, right? So like they are what tell us um, what's going on. Um, And they are like kind of like, like what Margaret Mead said, they're a barometer to how we're experiencing our environment. So Hmm. because of that, they are adaptive, right? Like if, um, if we didn't have our emotions, we would die. Right. If we didn't know um, not to touch 
a, a hot pan, right? We would always burn ourselves, right? So like they are, um, they, they let us know, oh, okay, yeah, we shouldn't do this. Um, pain is an emotion. Um, mm-hmm. So um, because of this, uh, you know, since we're talking about jealousy, before we can talk about jealousy, because jealousy is a complex emotion, we need to talk about basic emotions. So basic emotions are um, universally accepted or um, are universally um, known, understood emotions. So they are um, like joy, anger, sadness, fear, and disgust, right? And the way that we know these are, each of those emotions has a universally accepted expression of that feeling by, by, uh, by, the, by a facial reaction. Um, and, uh, a really good example of these comes from Pixar's Inside Out, um, mm-hmm. with, in the, um, uh, the, the podcast, uh, thing here, but, um, show notes. the show notes, but the cool thing about it is on the, on the picture, um, each one of those is showing you the, 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 what is the word I'm thinking of? Expression. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the, the facial expression that goes along with that feeling. Ah. Right? So, like, that's how we are kind of, that's how we know how to interpret what the other person is feeling. Um, but here's something fun. Fun fact about emotions. Um. If you notice, there are more what we would classify as negative emotions than there are what we would classify as positive emotions on there. Why is that? Mm -hmm. Well, if I think about it more often, we don't necessarily need to react to quote unquote positive feelings. You know, if you're happy, you're happy. But if you're you're angry, you may need to find a way or, uh, out of it. Or if you're afraid, there's flight or fight. You may need to run away. You may need to get away. Yes, absolutely. So, like, um, from an evolutionary standpoint, um, happiness isn't really going to keep us alive, right? Mm-hmm. Anger, sadness, fear, and disgust they are right like they are going to tell mm-hmm. us they're going to keep us alive so to speak um so one thing to 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 think about is when it comes to emotions we don't really have negative emotions or positive emotions we just have emotions right mm-hmm. and they're, they're mm-hmm. adaptive or maladaptive okay Um, does that make sense, Gary? Um, so um, I need to rewind to go back to something you said earlier because I disagree with something. That's right. um, pain is a physical factor, like, like, pain is a reaction from the nervous system, it could also be like an emotional construct, but like. I was completely thrown off when you were like, well, pain is an emotional state. And I'm like, mm, nope. Like, like there's associate... a difference between <laughs> physical and emotional pain. I know, right. but I was, I was just like kind of hung up on that. For a I, mean, I mean, you could say that, that it is a pain. It, it's almost, I'm trying to look through here to try to fi- find what's probably a, a, like, because when you feel pain, you do get an emotional reaction. Sometimes it's, not much uh, uh, of a reaction. Yeah, you know, I, mean, I think it's I very tiny. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think the uh, like when we talk about jealousy, jealousy is a painful emotion, right? It doesn't always feel that good. Right. No. So, like, mm-hmm. it could be used as a description, but like as a a way to describe an emotion. That, you know, it is painful, like, you know, and that something can be. But that's part where I was just like, if I was to blindfold you and sit you down and, uh, and like, 
sensory deprivate you basically and take a, a scolding hot branding iron and touch your skin with it that sensation for most individuals is pain so that's where i was like like your ner- your sensory nerves like are, are overloading and telling your body like that there is damage being committed to you in that moment so that's like and i guess maybe that's like the interpretation for me is like that's what is pain like the infliction of that like that's how we we compute that you know the hurt uh i guess is the way to say it i don't know why i use our quotes um <laughs> so anyways i'm not it's not a debate thing i was just kind of like you were saying that earlier and i was like wait hold up i was like um so yeah i mean i, I think that jealousy can be considered painful but i guess i'm more like probably that like we were discussing earlier with the quotes, like it's not always a negative emotion. So it's not always painful. Right, exactly. Um, so um, thank you for that. Um, <laughs> so I also um, put on here uh, a periodic table of hum- human actions. Um, my kind of reaction to this is it's not exactly like really accurate, but I like... I like the look of it. I like the fact that it shows that um, that like the basic emotions of love, joy, surprise, anger, sadness, fear, and disgust that they're there. And then under each one of those categories are different emotions that um, are similar to that, or different um, expressions of that emotion. So if if you notice, mm-hmm. jealousy falls under anger, but um, mm-hmm. what we'll talk about is. Jealousy is also um, wrapped up in sadness and fear as well. So, yep. um, uh, so I think that like, you know, it's not always just anger. There are other feelings as well associated with that. But on the whole, mm-hmm. I do like this model, and I think it's really helpful because, um, I don't know about you guys, but. Uh, when I went to school, um, I wasn't taught how to feel things and I wasn't really taught how to express my emotions and things like that. So like this wasn't a class that I took. So having something like this is really helpful um, when working with uh, individuals, with couples, um, with other kind of relationship structures, because it can give people a, a language for how they're feeling that they may not be able to express. Mm hmm. Yeah. I don't think any of us were really ever taught how to express emotions or hell, how you how even to um, determine emotions that you're actually feeling, um, you know, it, which has, you know, led to, I think, overall, a lot of the reasons why a lot of us are dealing with things in very odd and weird ways and sometimes in not so positive ways as well you know um i will speak from my personal experience um i lived in a household where emotions were suppressed in general you know um and because of that suppression it often for me and i'm also and on the flip of that i'm a very empathic person which is kind of weird so um um, it's a very co- it was a very complex time growing up, and looking back on it now, you know, fully kind of realizing what's going on. Like, yeah, my parents were while they were loving, that emotional love was I don't know how well it was expressed, you know, in in, in growing up, and I don't know how, like, I know how anger sometimes was expressed, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> um, but you know. There are there are reasons that I feel like like we kind of get that from our parents or from our environment, and it's not always again like I said it's not always positive, and that's usually one of the few places where we learn how to learn or see how emotions are expressed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 
So, so yeah, so like, you know, it can be difficult for people to even identify their basic emotions, right? Then we got to, then we're going to layer on some other stuff. Now we're going to talk about complex emotions. So like, Mm -hmm. man, (laughs) so like, so complex emotions. So examples of that is our grief, regret, jealousy, and envy. So what, so they, they include various emotional states. Um, and the one that I'm most familiar with, um, and I'll give you the example for this, but um, grief, there is a, um, a grief model where um, grief is a process, right? And, it's, um, and it is comprised of uh, the DABDA model, which is denial, mm-hmm. anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. And the way that I remember that are through the first five episodes of The House on Haunted Hill, um, the... Uh, the horror series on Netflix from last year, um, which used the first five episodes were um, an allegory for the, for the grief process, um, which I thought was Mm -hmm. an absolutely fascinating device. Now, um, Freud, um, you know, a problematic man, however, he's been helpful. Uh, He had a model of jealousy that included four, four kind of components. Um, They're not all emotional states, but it includes grief, um, the pain of losing a, a potential a relationship, the realization that we can't have everything that we want, um, and, uh, en- enmity, <laughs> um, <laughs> like towards the winner of the affection um, or the one getting the attention, and then anger towards ourselves that we are not good enough. Mm. So there's where, where those complex emo- those complex emotions are coming from. And um, what's different from complex emotions from basic emotions are that they're not usually universally accepted. So uh, the the emotion is going to be based on the person themselves, the situation. So, Damon, you were talking about with, you know, like your family upbringing, right? Like how it's, how that is modeled for you. So, like, I mean, if you're if basic emotions aren't modeled for you, complex emotions are surely not going to be modeled. And then also the culture. So um, Hispanic uh, cultures are um, with uh, with jealousy. Jealousy is seen as a positive thing, as a, as a sign that, like, uh, I matter to you. So jealousy mm-hmm. is um, not bad uh, in, that, in that culture. It's what happens as a result of the jealousy that can be, like, negative. Um, therefore... So that's why we can't really rely on um, the universal like facial expressions to tell us what's going on with the person with complex. Mm. Hmm. Mm. And also if we're taught that um, because, and we'll talk about the stigma, but with jealousy, so, um, so jealousy, what's wrapped up in jealousy is the feelings of anger, sadness, and fear. Um, and it's typically experienced when a person is experiencing a threat to a relationship. So we're going to be talking a lot about romantic jealousy, but it's important to know that jealousy is not only reserved for romantic relationships. We can have, and we do have, feelings of jealousy in all different kinds of relationships with our family, with our work, with our friends. Um, so, so yeah, so jealousy is, is not something that is just for romantic relationships. Um, is it normal? Of course, uh, evolutionary scientists have shown that, uh, animals, um, like dogs have that they experience jealousy. I remember when I first moved here, um, Whenever I would sit on the couch with Jim, our dog or Jim's dog (laughs) would jump in the middle of us. And like when we would be canoodling on the couch, uh, Brew would go crazy. (laughs) She did not like when uh, when we were that close together. And I have seen that um, in when we went to go visit uh, my mother-in-law, my Mm -hmm. nephew. When my nephew was like all over us and Brew got in between us. Um, and it was really adorable. <laughs> but 
It goes to show that, like, you know, humans aren't the only ones who experience jealousy. Um, And it is a necessary emotion so that we preserve our social bonds, which are important to us. And while it may be a normal reaction, it's not always helpful because evolutionary or from an evolutionary model, it is um, like evolution just wants us to like move forward genetically. It doesn't really care about other people in our relationships. So, um, so that's kind of the goal there. So we have to like take a step back and go, okay, so I understand that this is um, adaptable, that this is like, um, that this is normal, but this isn't going to really help with the relationship that I have with this person over here. Mm. Um, so people who experience jealousy in relationships, um, shockingly <laughs> report decreased relationship satisfaction. Um, <laughs> you know, so go what you mean Rocker. is it is, it is not a surprise. Exactly. That, a, a little like, facetious there. Yeah, like that we, <laughs> when we connotate jealousy within a relationship, that it's that's it's a negative. It's not necessarily a positive, or right. even neutral, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So, so why do you think that people are jealous? Why do you think that that people feel jealous? Because they feel <laughs> inadequate. Uh huh. Yeah. They don't. They don't. They're. Yeah, that's the big one for me is like they don't necessarily feel um, I think it's also like you said, there's that fear uh, of, of loss. Um, well, there yeah, could be a FOMO. Fear of like, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, like, their affection or. I mean, I, I think there's both of those, both what Damon and Jeff, you guys are saying, like, I think there's fear of missing out. Like seeing something from another individual, like if you were to see someone that you're interested in or maybe that you're in a relationship with that is like, you know, showing some emotion towards another person and you don't get that, like you mm-hmm. might feel like you're missing out. But I could also see that like you like that you're Damon, you were saying about loss that like, you know, that yeah. that's not existent. You're going to you have the potential of losing that person in mm-hmm. some ways. Um, uh, what was the other one I was thinking about? Um the, the usual thing I, I think of also is like it's a bit sometimes it's a bit of that envy of like they're getting something that you want, mm-hmm. um, you know, um, to use the job kind of thing. You know, there's someone like getting that promotion and you've been working your ass off, but you're still not getting it. And you don't know why. So you get a little jealous of that person. For, you know, because they're getting the job and they're getting the big bucks or they're getting the praise and admiration or whatever, and you're not. Mm hmm. Yeah. I usually have found like my sense of jealousy is about the fact that I lack uh, internally a strong sense of self, like an independence mm. of, of who I am. And because of that, I'm being comparative. So I'm thinking about myself like in comparison to another individual, like, well, why don't they want to hang out with me? Or why don't they want to do things with me? Why don't they find me attractive? Like, why don't they want to date me? Why don't they want to have sex with me? Like, you know, why am I not good enough? Like, it's 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 mm-hmm. purely comparison. Like, and what I'm most likely missing in that moment, I have found, is just a sense of, like, check yourself, honey. Like, you might think that you're all that in a bag of chips, but they don't like, and it's not that big a deal. Do you know what I mean? Like you're making, you're making it a bigger thing about you than it really is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so like, so yeah, so research suggests that low self-esteem, right? Possessiveness over things, um, high neuroticism. Uh, I, don't really know how I feel about that. Fear of abandonment are predictors of jealousy. Cause I, so the reason why I don't really particularly care for the, the term neuroticism is that it is that there's a lot of stigma wrapped up in that. I read that as high, yeah. uh, high trauma. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. That's an interesting, 
Huh. I, I have to admit, before I looked at the doc to see what you were talking about, I swear I thought you said high eroticism. Oh. No. I'm like, huh? Hearing what you want to hear? Um, oh. Well, I mean, so here's, I think the, the high neuroticism, uh, what, what isn't understood easily is I think they mean higher than usual. Yeah. Like, does that make sense? Like, I think that, you know, everyone has feelings of anxiety and worry and fear and anger and frustration and jealousy, like all these things. And those can be traits of being neurotic. So I think everybody has that within their themselves in some fashion, unless they've already worked through these things. Um, or perhaps, you know, we're come from an environment where that was, you know, processed and handled very early on. Um, I would mm. say for most Americans, that is not the case. Uh, given how people are reacting currently in the pandemic. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but like, so, yeah, so I get that. Like, so like, there's like baseline, right? Like emotions, right? And that like anything above that is, can be classified like within neuroticism. But like with, um, uh, like you all know about like um, personality disorders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I haven't, you know, officially engaged any, but you know. <laughs> well, so um, I find I find the 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 study, the treatment of of uh, personality disorders to be like a very sticky situation um, because I see like personality disorders as just an expression of like trauma. Um, so I'm like. How about we talk about it like, oh, here's a traumatic individual. Here's a person who's experienced trauma, right? And like, because mm-hmm. in our society, we see people who have higher emotional reactions to things as like very unstable and like, um, and not, not worthy. Um, mm. And like unapproachable and things like that. Um, and in my field, uh, people who have a lot of high emotions and everything are almost seen as um, not people that can be worked with. Like, really? uh, you know, like, uh, uh, like I don't want to work with this person because they're 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 very high highly emotional re- reactive, um, and I mm. like that. <laughs> so I think that like when we. <laughs> Uh, when we label somebody as like neurotic or um, as somebody who has borderline personality disorder, um, I think you're setting somebody up for uh, for for a uh, poor internal sense of themselves and then also an, an external sense of themselves. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that uh, the otherness that we create for individuals is out of a sense of um, discomfort internally. Like we can't relate, we don't understand, so we just push away or put them in a box. Like we're not we're not willing to engage to gain some, you know, understanding or perhaps there's too much pain and recognizing internally traits that we have that can be seen in another individual. Yeah, and mm-hmm. what when we kind of talk about, uh, so that's a good segue. Um, so one of the, uh, things that I talked about there was that, um, like fear of abandonment, um, and fear of abandonment, um, is, uh, really typical with people who suffer from anxious attachment styles. Um, have you, have we ever talked about like attachment, um, being an issue with, um, in relationships? I know. feel no. like we do, but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> so there is a theory in, uh, like, social work, you know, it's a interpersonal um, uh, theory called attachment theory, right? And it was created by um, John Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth. Um, and they uh, talked about that everybody has different attachment styles. Um, and So the four styles are secure, anxious, um, avoidant, dismissive, and avoidant, fearful. So 
the goal is um, we want somebody to have a secure attachment. So that is somebody who can trust fairly easily, is attuned to emotions and can communicate um, and leads with uh, cooperative and flexible behavior in the relationships. So somebody who has anxious um, attachment has a sensitive nervous system. Um, they are they struggle to communicate their needs directly. They tend to act out, um, i.e., they have jealousy. Um, somebody who has avoidant dismissive. They downplay the importance of of relationships, um, and it's usually extreme is usually extremely self reliant. Um, and can become more vulnerable when there is a big crisis. And people who are avoidant fearful, they're more dependent in relationships than avoidant dismissive. They, um, they have very strong fears of rejection. They have low self-esteem and they have uh, high anxiety in relationships. So typically you're gonna see um, people are more jealous on the, the right side here. So with anxious and avoidant fearful, um, but with anxious attachment, right, um, that is somebody who has a very strong fear of being abandoned. So given mm -hmm. that description, right, um, like somebody who has, uh, uh, an anxious attachment is going to experience probably a higher, um, rate of jealousy. And the other thing with attachment is, um, typically attachment is created our style our pattern from uh, from infancy right it's all about our caregiver um, that being said that's not to say that that can't be disrupted later on in life right like if you have a traumatic experience um, say a parent dies um, you have like a really big disruption in your life that can also create a, a different kind of a, an attachment style or pattern. Um, mm. And I said that like people are, that jealousy can come up in not just romantic relationships. If, um, if you are somebody who can date back from like an early childhood times when jealousy has come up in your life, you probably are experiencing an anxious attachment style, right? Like if you were ever really jealous over your schoolmates or you, um, you were jealous of that promotion or you were, you know, you were jealous about that your sister got more attention than you did, right? Like this is where this is coming up. So when you're in a relationship and this comes up, it's really important for you to go like, oh, what's my relationship with jealousy? Have I experienced this in the past? Oh, maybe this is more <laughs> about me than it is about the other person. Mm. True. Right? Sorry, so, I just, I forgot. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Like, So like, um, so there are two different kinds of jealousy. Um, so you have suspicious, suspicious jealousy and you have reactive jealousy. So people who have like anxious attachment, they're more likely to experience suspicious jealousy and that is stimulated by, to go back to the cognitive triangle, by a thought or a feeling rather than something that actually happened. And um, and this is typically due to an attachment trauma um, or feeling like really self-conscious or having low self-esteem. But like reactive jealousy, that is triggered by an actual event um, or a, well, trigger. So there was a study <laughs> that, um, had uh, 10, uh, 10 couples, right? Um, and they were in a second life um, digital environment and they enacted um, jealousy uh, triggers, right? Like, so another person was coming on to their partner and the reaction was of that was that the, the partner the other partner made a reactive jealousy behavior, right? Or a statement or something. Mm. So that was, that. that's an example of reactive jealousy, that it was motivated by an actual trigger or an event. Mm. So those are the ones that like we can point to, right? But so many times jealousy is motivated by what's in between your ears. Fair. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that actually makes like the most sense to me. Like sometimes we don't think about, or we think too much 
about the what ifs, you know, um, yeah, like we, like, I mean, I, I, you know, everyone knows I'm in an open relationship. There's that whole, the whole jealousy issue that comes up for people. Like, don't you ever get jealous? And I'm like, yeah, we get jealous. It happens because it's a thing that can happen. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't, you, you can think too much about the person that your partner is talking to or um, hanging out with or maybe spending, uh, you know, time with and you get these thoughts in your head uh, well, what's going to happen next? What could potentially happen? The worst case scenario sometimes is that they're going to find that person more attractive or more interesting or more whatever than you, and you lead, lead you to that jealousy factor or that jealousy moment. Exactly. Um, yeah. Like you like Hades Town, right? Huh? You like Hades Town? I actually have not heard that one all the way through. It's a more recent musical that I haven't heard, but that's just because it's. It, I know it's recent, and that's. that's I know I, I know of it, and I've heard like a song from it, but I don't know the musical in and of itself. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> totally fine. I'll. Uh, uh, so now after this, I, I hope that you will engage with this, um, Jeff uh, or Gary. Have you? Um, ever or Gary, have you ever heard Haiti sound? I don't even know what you're talking about. First time I've heard. Uh, oh. I'm so <laughs> disappointed. Okay, do you know about the um the uh the Greek myth of um Orpheus and Eurydice? No. No. Oh God. I I Hold on. I I think I've heard of it. I just can't remember it. All right. Well, um, Orpheus uh, goes into Hades to go get his his girlfriend or his wife, um, mm-hmm. who's down there. And uh, Hades says, "You can you can bring her out of here, but you have to walk in front of her, and you can't look back. If you look back, and um, if you look back at any point to make sure that she's there, um, she comes back here, uh, no questions mm-hmm. asked." Right? So. Yeah. Um, so in the musical, Hermes, the messenger of Hades, um, says, the meanest dog you'll ever meet, he ain't the hound dog in the streets. He bears some teeth and tears some skin, but brother, that's the worst of him. The dog you really got to dread is the one that howls inside your head. It's him whose howling drives men mad and a mind to its undoing. So... Mm. Because of that, jealousy happens like right in between our ears for a lot of people. That's suspicious jealousy, and it'll it is a self fulfilling prophecy. Um, and if you don't mm-hmm. listen to it and you don't pay attention to it, it's gonna drive you bananas. Oh. That makes sense. Yeah. I'm working on. Trying to, because I did not want to spell Orpheus in your dicey in the in the. Um, <laughs> so I'm working on getting that into tags. Um, so what if I like bananas? Um, well, quickly unlike them, Gary. Please. Well, or it's right. gonna drive you. Just what, a fruit. <laughs> I'm just messing it's with you. But I do remember the Greek story after you explained it, like, really briefly. Because oh. because the concept is, is that he needs to trust. Yes. Mm-hmm. If he does not, then he will lose her, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And trust is a huge issue with people who have anxious attachment because they don't trust that that relationship is, um, is going to, is that that, that other person is always going to be there. Mm-hmm. Right. You, he shouldn't have to look back because she's supposed to be following him and he should trust that she will be there. But that's where, like you said, the, the like, I like the idea of like, it's all like, it's in your head. Like, yeah. is she really going to be there? Is she still there? Like, I, I need to know, I need to see it. I need to see it with my own eyes. Like I need to know for sure that she will be there. And yeah. 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 And in the well, song, better. 
um, and in the song, uh, like the chorus is that doubt comes in, right? Like he starts out really strong, like I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do this, right? Mm-hmm. And then as the song goes on, he loses his trust. He like his doubt goes through the roof, um, mm-hmm. and eventually, like right before, he has to look behind him. Um, it's so good. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, I've I mean, heard good I, things about the musical. I've been wanting to. It's one of the ones that I've been wanting to see, random aside. Like it's, I've heard great things about it, and I just want to go. But I, I have to. In order to see it live, I have to wait for it to. Are you one tour. of the people that can't listen to? Uh, you can't see a show without. You can't see a show. You have to see a show first. No. No, not really. Um, kind of an aside, like there, there are a few musicals that I've listened, like several musicals that I've listened to before I ever saw them live. Um, Hades Town is just one, but that's usually like more familiar ones, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I hate using the word popular, but that's that's the word that comes to mind. Like older musicals I saw the or I listened to the music before I ever actually knew the musical um there are a few um that I if I know I'm going to have an opportunity to see them I try to hold off on listening to a lot of the music because I want to know more about it I'm 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 very like like I like to be "Quote unquote surprise when I see a show for the first time, mm-hmm. um, and listening to all of the music sometimes is not the the greatest thing. Um, for <laughs> this is a perfect example because we keep talking. We've talked about Rent a lot. Um, in the first song that you hear in Rent, the the song Rent, um, because I didn't know the show show before I saw the music, or I listened to, before I listened to the music." Um, there's the scene where Maureen is talking, or Joanne is talking to Maureen in the, if you know the song, mm-hmm. for some reason in my head for a lot, for a while, I thought that was two people. I thought it was Maureen and Joanne talking to each other in that first little snippet. And I mean, I was totally wrong, obviously, but I didn't know that by listening to it. Stop it. <laughs> Anyway, move move right along. <laughs> There's the no, peanut I'm... gallery for you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just so you know, in the live chat, your whole like side conversation just now, uh, Philip says this is all just a play to get back to cats. <laughs> <laughs> and if anybody doesn't know what they are, become a patron. Oh. There anyway, continue. All right. So, um, come on, Ed. What do we do? So what do you do? Okay, well let me tell you. So what do you, so like the first thing it's really important before you jump into those behaviors, it may be really helpful to work on yourself first because mm. maybe we're in between our heads, right? Um and maybe we want to first see is this really a threat or am I am I blowing this out of proportion? So okay. like that I'm going to be really nasty and facetious right now. That doesn't work for me. I'm a true-blooded American. I don't work on myself. Obviously, I'm perfect. There's nothing wrong with me. It's other people that need to work on themselves. So, (laughs) wow. Okay, Gary. Okay, Gary. (laughs) No, I'm just like, that's what I'm hearing. I can hear people being like, eh, tuning out, not listening. Like, (laughs) Not not understanding that, you know, I am not disagreeing with you, Ed. I'm, I'm being an asshole on purpose because it's like, because I think a lot of people are like, nah, I don't need to work on I'm me. fine. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. I need I'm to fine. It's the rest of the world that's fucked. Like, they have to get their shit together. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, and I also think it's important. Uh, so the, the one book that I put in there, um, the Jealousy Workbook, um, mm-hmm. get that book. It is really good. I was um, I bought it this week, um, and I was very surprised at how well how um, there are some really good tools in there that we're going to talk about. Uh, but like, you know, I got this directly from there. But um, 
but it talks about, like I said before, like, what is your relationship with jealousy? You know, like, have you been somebody that has experienced this feeling in the past? Um, and kind of like, do you have a pattern of jealousy in your life? And how intense has that jealousy been? Um, so like, these are some questions to ask yourself. Is this, is this me or is this the other person who's feeling this? I will say to, to echo Gary, that takes a lot of, uh, uh, self-awareness <laughs> that a lot of people Fair. don't have. <laughs> Fair. So, well, so I'm asking people to be a little more self-aware correct. of themselves. <laughs> and for those of you that are, uh, what Ed's referring to is that we're going to have some resources that will be listed on our website. Uh, the Jealousy Workbook is available on Amazon. And looking through the review, lo and behold, Dossie Eaton, co-author of The Ethical Slut, ding, uh, a book we've mentioned several times in this podcast over the years, is quoted as saying, for anyone struggling with relationship jealousy or insecurity, and especially for people with multiple loves, this will guide you through the labyrinth of jealousy and bring you safely out to your widest possible selection of lifestyle choices. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so yeah, this this has been a great read, and like I'm even taking notes on this myself. Well, as we can see, um, <laughs> because I mean, I'm just going to be honest. You know, like I suffer with insecure attachment. Um, so, like this is something that I um, I have experienced. I do experience um, probably more than the typical person, and. Um, and I like that. Uh, so the author of the book talks about um, what are you feeling? Because if we're if we're framing jealousy as a complex complex emotion uh, of angry, sad, sadness, and and fear, what are those feelings? Right? Mm-hmm. How strong is the fear? How strong is the sadness? And how strong is the anger? And like, what percentage are you going to give them, give each of them? So she talks about um, a, like a pie chart. So like in any given situation, are you more, are you more angry, sad, and afraid? What percentage of those are, are those? And like, that can tell you, oh, okay, what do I need to address first? Right. Um, So, uh, and research also says that, um, Men typically are going to experience more anger when they're having jealousy and women are going to experience more fear when it comes to jealousy. Um, Mm. So, uh, and then, you know, to, to talk about the, um, uh, the suspicious jealousy or the reactive jealousy, what evidence do we have? What happened? What was the trigger for this? Why am I experiencing this emotion? Um, And then what thoughts am I having, right? Because, you know, we know that our thoughts will run rampant in our heads. And uh, over over a given day, we have about like, what, like 2,000 thoughts, maybe even like more, right? And like, they can't all be true, (laughs) right? Like... You know, sometimes I have thoughts I want to go fly, like fly, right? I can't fly. Like, you know, wouldn't it be cool to fly (laughs) outside? I can't do that. Why am I going to entertain that thought? So, you know, if I have a thought like, I wonder if my partner is cheating on me, right? Like, can it just be a thought? (laughs) Why does it have to be true? Um, So, you know, like sometimes we have to be a little critical of our own thoughts, Um we can't we can't put all of our all of our eggs in every single one of our thoughts. Um, so then also like why am I feeling this way, Damon? You were talking about envy, right? Am I just mm-hmm. envious of something? Um, is am I envious of my partner? Am I envious of what they're doing? Right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like I can't control people, so do I just need to like do some of those things? Right. Um, and not really be concerned about what they're doing rather rather than like what I'm doing. I can't control people. No, sorry. <laughs> I can't. Did anybody um hey, has anybody seen uh the magicians? Nope. No. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> We are awful people. <laughs> Jeff, do you watch The Magicians? Nope. 
Ugh, Gary. Sorry, Ed, you are striking out tonight. We are just not all three of us vibing. The disgust. Okay, well, oh, the magician. Why aren't you watching the magician? Switch to food. Use different analogies or sex. Those usually work with us. <laughs> oh, man, I love, yeah. Well, either way, so on the magicians, hopefully there are some listeners who know what I'm talking about. They talked okay. about, they talk okay. about external circumstances and that um, we can't always control external circumstances. Uh, circumstances however we can control internal circumstances when it comes to magic um so what that means is that like you know work on what is inside right we can control that we cannot control what is happening around us um so another thing that's really helpful is how am i experiencing this physically so like when when i'm feeling angry or when I'm feeling afraid, that will uh, manifest itself in my body in some way. Typically, I tense up. So if I can take care of my bodily sensations, that will have a reaction to my mental state. Go figure. So, (laughs) you know, hey, am I feeling really tense right now? How about I relax, right? Let me do something that's going to relax myself. And let's see how I feel after I do that. Um, and if you can be so aware of yourself, notice that our thoughts and emotions can shift and they can change. So how you're feeling is not going to last forever. Right. So like, I don't have to react to every single emotion that I have. Um, Um, I don't have to react to every single thought that I have. Just like I said before, um, and just like, I mean, I hope that you guys can relate to like a, an ocean metaphor, but like, like waves, <laughs> right? Um, our thoughts and our emotions are like waves, right? They come and they go. So when we engage in like mindfulness and meditation, one of the goals is to recognize, to become aware that like our, we're going to have thoughts, we're going to have emotions, but then they're going to go away. And so these fe- this feeling of jealousy, I don't have to grab onto it with like a death grip. I can like, I can let it go. Mm-hmm. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> That's right. one we can all relate to. <laughs> so once, once we do this, then we can think about talking to our partner about it. Right. Um, Like once we take care of ourselves, then we can and we can say, this is why I'm feeling this. This is these are the thoughts that I'm having. Um, Like I can I feel like I can have a conversation about this. Mm -hmm. So then we flip back to our uh, our communication uh, podcast and then we talk about that nonviolent communication. Right. And we can communicate our feelings. We can communicate our thoughts. Um, and we can recognize that, you know what, this jealousy is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just telling me that I feel scared or I feel angry or I feel sad. Right. And I can do yeah. that. <laughs> right. I can talk about those. Yeah. And then with my partner, we can discuss, OK, so like, what am I what am I wanting? What am I needing from my from my partner? Do we need to to communicate any boundaries um or is what i'm asking too much right um Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know and like we have to be open to the idea that like what we may be asking of our partner may not be something that they can give us right because it may be unreasonable i'm sorry it's okay yeah 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 But what's cool is that our partner gets the opportunity to take care of us during that process. And when we can come to our partner, not in a defensive, not in a reactive way, in a calm way, our partner is more likely to listen to us and to be empathetic to our needs. And then we won't get defensive um, or then they won't get defensive. Mm-hmm. you know yeah. I like it a lot um, 
So uh, in the jealousy uh, workbook, it talks about if you're the partner who is um, the one, if, if, if you are the one whose partner is jealous, right, um, the important thing for the, for the partner to do is to just listen, right, and mm-hmm. to constantly remind yourself, shut up, shut up, shut up and listen, <laughs> right? Um, like your job is not to respond right now. Um, because this is this is this says more about them than it does about you, right? Like they've got something going on right now, mm-hmm. and they need to get it out. And it's your job is just to take care of them mm-hmm. and to reflect back what you're hearing them say, and then deal with it then, right? Yeah, it's funny. I'm just like. One of the things Jim and I kind of agreed on is if we're having an issue, we need to like, you know, take some time and actually talk about it. Um, And, you know, the big thing being like, if it's happening, like we've been at events and such where we've gone together and if something is bothering us, we are supposed to let the other partner, let the partner know, the other partner know. Um, It works sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes Mm -hmm. we wait till the weekend is over and have that kind of moment on the sometimes on the car ride home or something along those lines kind of discuss you know how things went and how we're feeling um and sometimes that's when things get discussed which good and bad depending on how you you know you know think about it um i know and he knows that i have difficulties expressing my emotions which is like, weird again considering the empath side of me um but that's again i think as i talked about earlier like that's because of i the emotional suppression of my you know growing up side so i have difficulties and i also have a weird intense ability feeling that i should be able to take care of things myself and so i know if i am having an issue i need to more often than not let him in because i usually won't Mm. If that makes sense. So, and us being open, sometimes like jealousy is one of the few emotions I think that we are, at least I, <laughs> have felt often. And I think I see that we both have in some ways, um, different ways over the course of our relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I know for... For me, um, I I experience jealousy um, a lot with my uh, friends mm. uh, because I like growing up. Um, there was always a competition. I went to a Catholic school. Mm. Uh, there was thirteen of us, uh, and there were uh, my friends. There would always be some kind of competition for somebody's. Uh, like somebody was always the most popular. It was never me, <laughs> but mm-hmm. like, and I was, I would be friends with one person and then like the next week they would be hanging out exclusively with this person or this person. And yeah. so like, I always have this feeling that, um, oh my gosh, they're not my friend anymore. Right. Mm-hmm. They don't really like me as much. Um, and it becomes this competition where there is no competition. That's all in my head. And um, that hasn't always um, worked out well for me, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, uh, like I, I've lost some friendships because of the way that I react to that. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, it's not always a good thing. No. Um, mm-hmm. And like it says with those uh, anxious attachment people, I really struggle uh, communicating that with people because I'm fr- I'm afraid that like if you um, if if I tell you this then you're gonna reject me. Mm. Interesting. So there's that fear of rejection there too. Yep. Mm. I, I I very strongly identify with Evan Hansen from Dear Evan Hansen. <laughs> very strongly. Wow. Yeah. 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 There's a reference that I can get. <laughs> oh, good. Yay. Ding, 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 ding. Another whoosh for me, but hey. 
Oh, really? Oh, Jeff, you would really like Dear Evan Hansen. It's really good. I haven't seen it either. Oh. I have no idea what you're talking oh. about. Okay. Um, I know. I know. I know. Is it plays? a play? Is this a TV not... show? Mm-hmm. Yes, Sorry, I've been Disney. watching too much Disney because that's what they're making me watch. It's a long story. Anyways. It's, it's I'm totally going to that. And it is... It is really, really good. I didn't, I didn't uh, hear the first part. What is it? It's a musical. Oh, yeah. I yeah. Understand. And Ben yeah. Platt um, is, was the original Evan Hansen. And mm-hmm. that was a tour de force. Like, yeah. that man just, like, emotionally vomited over that stage. Every So Jim and I actually had the wonderful honor of seeing that show when it was in previews. I went into it cold. I had no idea what I was about to experience. Mm -hmm. And um, at the act one finale, uh, they do this like really uplifting song um, called. uh, You will be found. You will be found. Right. And um, after it was done, (laughs) uh, we just sat there. I was like sobbing. And uh, a minute goes by, and then Jim turns to me and goes to say something, and he goes, I can't say it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Which is very weird. If you know my husband, he's not the most, um, he's not the most emotional person. So, uh, so to, for it to elicit such a response from him, um, it was really, it was, it was quite an experience. Um, yeah. Oof. Uh- and sadly, are, it is not on Broadway HD. No, no, it's too new, and it's still live on Broadway right now. It'd be very, it's it. No, not too. I hate saying too new, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, it is like it 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 has knocked um, musicals out of my top ten musicals that I've ever seen oh. because it's so good. Like I and kind of I know I know we keep talking about musicals. We're not going back to Cats, but like. <laughs> Because of just how beautifully arranged and how great the sound is and just music wise, it is so amazing. But then the story that is told over top of that is like it it blows your mind. And um trying to think about like you can find videos of it on YouTube very easily. I don't think you can find a whole musical. I know you can find the soundtrack very easily on YouTube because I have listened to the soundtrack on YouTube. So, like, every song that's in there. So, so what's it called um, again? Dear, Dear Evan, Evan Hansen. It's, it's listed in the tags. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so in talk, so if I was Dear Evan Hansen, if I was Evan Hansen <laughs> and mm-hmm. I was experiencing some jealousy, right? What I would do, and that's the other cool thing about Dear Evan Hansen, is that um, it starts with him. It's on Apple uh, Music. So. He's, in, he's in therapy, right? Again, also why it's awesome for me. Um, but he, uh, you know, if, so if I was Evan Hansen and I was experiencing jealousy, um, I would, um, there are some things that you could do, right? How do, how do we address our jealousy? Um, because like I said, it is a natural feeling, but it's not always great in how it, uh, how it presents in our relationship. So, um, in the jealousy workbook, so chapter 17 through the end, um, they talk about different, different, uh, treatment modalities, um, to use. So like they talk about like the benefits of Buddhism um, mindfulness and meditation. Um, and with Buddhism, they talk about the, the, the practice of attachment. Um, and like, you know, attachment, um, is brings pain, right? So if we can practice non-attachment, um, and non-permanence, um, then we can, then we stand, then we stand a fighting chance. Um, so another thing that I have used um, or I know uh, that is helpful for uh, for trauma is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, also called EMDR. Um, in the field, they say it's like magic because it has such a good success rate. Um, so this book is saying that um, EMDR can be really helpful with jealousy. 
um, which I never really thought about before. So, uh, you know, that could be something. Um, also using positive affirmations, right? Like, uh, you know, I really value my relationship. Um, cause one of the things with, um, with jealousy is fear, right? Anxiety is one of the qualities. So one of the ways that we can, we can, uh, we can fight against that is with gratitude, right? Being grateful for the relationship that I have, being grateful for the, uh, for the, for the, the friendship that I have. Right. Um, and when we can focus our attention on, on those, on the gratitude, then, then those feelings of je- jealousy are to dissipate a little bit. Now, mm-hmm. the other thing that I thought was really interesting that I've never heard of was this um, uh, style of treatment, um, a therapy called neuro-linguistic programming. Um, I want to do some more reading in this, but it's a CBT, not cock and ball torture. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, that dissects no thoughts, problem. feelings, and behaviors, right? So like to go back to that cognitive triangle. So, uh, and the way that it's framed is really interesting. Um, so I'm looking forward to actually doing some more reading of that. Mm-hmm. So um, so that's, that's what I have on jealousy. However, um, do y'all know anything about compersion? What do you know about compersion? That sounds familiar to me, and I can't remember why. It's a very familiar f- word that I don't hear very often, so I can not remember exactly what it means. Gary? Um, if I recall correctly, it's a feeling specific that comes about when you have a polyamorous relationship. Uh-huh. And what is that feeling? Uh, it's going to be one of two things. It's either jealousy or the opposite of jealousy well the the latter was correct right so um or the former i always get those mixed up uh (laughs) (laughs) so um is some people refer to compersion as the opposite of jealousy um i like to say it it kind of coexists with jealousy um, mm-hmm. It is it is a reframe of jealousy, right? It is the pleasant feelings and thoughts towards your partner when they are in a positive romantic relationship with somebody That's else. Right. So when we are, um, I think somebody mentioned, um, like, oh, Gary, you said that uh, jealousy isn't really a um, a neutral feeling. Really, it's like a a painful feeling. It's a very strong feeling. Um, so one of the goals with therapy with jealousy is to either um, reframe it into a compersion kind of feeling or a neutral feeling. So it's not that strong. So somebody who is experiencing like very strong and jealous thoughts and emotions, right? And possibly some behaviors, we want to make sure that before they can experience the positive, the compersion aspect of it, that they can see a decrease of those jealousy feelings right so like if their partner was to go out on the date and before it was a like an eight right like this has really bothered me like i was it was at an eight right the Mm -hmm. goal can we get it to like a five or like like a four so it doesn't bother me enough so what that can tell me is that okay so we can we can change right like we can make some 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 efforts here so like Compersion may not be possible, right? I may not be able to have a positive reaction to my partner going out on a date with somebody. However, I am, I, I am possible. There is possibilities that I could, I could have a neutral reaction, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. Um, so the way that we, we do that is we increase our empathy, right? Um, and one of the tools for this is look through the situation through your partner's eyes or through the other mm-hmm. person's eyes, right? Like, can you be happy? Can you experience their happiness in that moment? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. So that's a way to like increase your empathy. Hmm. Um, the other thing is uh, the dichotomy is jealousy is a constriction 
right? Like constriction being that like, um, I want to limit things, right? Like I want to limit, um, I want to limit your behaviors. I want to increase our boundaries and things like that. So like yeah. another goal would be, um, not constriction, but expansion, right? I want to be expansive with my thoughts, right? I want to be more open-minded to things. I want to be, I want to possibly like have my boundaries be uh, porous rather than very strict, very rigid. Um, and then uh, some other uh, feelings are not having, um, not feeling excluded or abandoned or deprived, but rather belonging autonomy and responsibility right so like um and i should put this in there there's a really good book called um the secret to a passionate marriage where they talk about the um the concept of uh hold on where'd it go it's in there (laughs) um differentiation right that like uh, everybody is their own person who has uh, independent needs, independent wants, independent desires, independent hopes, independent dreams, right? And they don't have to be, um, uh, they don't have to be the other partner's uh, dreams, wants, mm-hmm. needs, desires, right? And recognizing that, yeah. like, I have my own needs and you have your own needs and they may not match up and that's totally okay. And that that can be a really big shift for a lot of people because once we can cut cut that cord, um, we, uh, we open up the possibilities, um, of agency. Okay. Makes sense. I think. Right. Hold on. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, I thought I put something in here about, um, triggers. Like jealousy triggers are. Yeah, where the I have a jealousy trigger thing. Doesn't look like it's there. I'm not seeing anything. Ah, uh, okay. Um. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, they um. So with triggers, right? Like. What do you think triggers are going to be for people in, say, uh, open relationships or poly relationships? That's just just Um, the other person doing something that you're not involved with directly. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Someone showing attraction to another person. Um, Yeah. That's a good one. I'll just leave it at that. Like showing attraction or interest in another person, even though you're open, that doesn't always mean that you are. You don't want to see it. Someone like, interested interest in your partner instead of you. Not interested. In yeah. 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 Um. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I I, I kind of think mostly, and I don't know for certain, I would think that the jealousy issue is more about the fact that there's concern that of loss, future loss, like that there's not that there's a lack of trust, and there and it being poly, so that they're concerned that the individual will fall in love with somebody else and fall out of love with you. Yes. So um, so I just pulled up this. So um, so in the the. Jealousy workbook, they talk about the three circles of poly hell, which I think are really interesting. Um, So these are the most common problems growing out of this tension between competing needs. And they are demotion, displacement, and intrusion. So demotion means that, like, one person is more important than the other person. Displacement. What was displacement? Displacement, uh, displacement is the feeling that a person's outside relationship is receiving so much time, attention, and loyalty that it is crowding out the primary relationship. And um, the third circle, um, intrusion, so that is um, that refers to the way an outside relationship has the tendency to invade the time and space of the primary relationship and make the primary partner feel unsafe. Mm. <laughs> I 
Yep. This is it a thinker episode, by the way? What? What now? This seems to be a thinker episode. <laughs> yeah, Where it's for like, sure. You're, 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 you're giving all this very interesting information, and not saying that sarcastically, it's interesting information for sure. And, and then it's like, huh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I it's, can, I, yeah. Like, there are, yeah. I'm, I, I'm just like, I'm sitting here like, yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That last one. Yep. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Right? I mean, those are, those are really, uh, like, common things, right? Like, I, um, you know, like what I was talking about with, like, the friends thing, right? Like, if, if one friend is getting more time uh, than the other friend, I'm going to instantly think that I'm not as important to the other person. Right. Um, and like, I'm going to see that I'm going to see that as a threat. I'm going to think that they don't like me anymore. And then I'm going to do something stupid um, that is going, <laughs> that is, that is going to get in the way. Um, and that is going to fulfill that prophecy that I have in my head. Um, so these are things that I, that I, I know personally I have to attune for, um, on a on a on a, a regular basis. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's 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 becoming. Yeah, I have some things to think about. Like I'm not going to be like <laughs> like because I know jealousy is one of the few things I personally have that I've had to deal with in the relationship that I'm currently in, and having this episode like as you know. Like, like I think Philip is saying, like we're all very quiet. Yeah, that's why, because you're like, like everything you're hitting is like, Bing, <laughs> like, like, Bing. What is this nail? Oh, Bing. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh-huh. here's it. Bing. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, like super serious. You're like, yeah, like, yeah. I, I will admit to being a jealous person, um, in general, um, I, as. As the only one of us who is currently in a relationship. I mean, and again, it's not just like the relationship that I'm with in with Jim. Mm-hmm. There are, like we were talking about, there are jealousy factors in other relationships as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like, yep. for sure. Yeah, I want to reframe that, um, Damon, for you that like you're not a jealous person. You're a person who experiences jealousy, right? There we go. Because when we label ourselves in that way, that can that can also have negative effects. Okay. Yeah. I am a person who experiences jealousy. That works. Okay. Yes. Just like yes, I am. Everybody <laughs> else, right? Because you know. A lot of people experience this, right? And it's not and to like kind of go into the review here, so it's a normal emotion. It's not it's not typically a bad thing, right? It just tells us that people are people mean a lot to us, right? Mm-hmm. And that like you know, we can it's telling us that like we, we and we are interpreting a threat to that relationship that we think is really important um and we want to protect it. However, mm-hmm our interpretation may not always be accurate. So, Mm -hmm. so sometimes that's not helpful. Um, We also want to listen to what jealousy is telling us as the person experiencing it or the person receiving it. Right. Um, You know, that like, this is somebody who is experiencing uh, like three emotions at the same time. Right. They're experiencing some fear that the relationship is going to end. They're experiencing sadness that they don't feel important and they're angry because they feel like they've been slighted. Um, So that's a lot to handle. So uh, be good to yourself, (laughs) right? Like that's, that's a lot. Um, Mm -hmm. And also I think we kind of talked about this, but like, don't, don't like, uh, don't, don't, oh, hold on. Know that you're on a ride, right? Know that jealousy is happening, right? Mm-hmm. Don't deny yourself the experience of admitting that you're feeling jealous, right? Because once you can say, oh, this is jealousy, it takes a power away from it, right? Mm-hmm. When we 
we won't admit that we're feeling jealous to either ourselves or to somebody else, we can't do anything about it because um, we're not working from from an accurate place, right? Um, <laughs> so when we can like say, I'm jealous, right? Okay, that's cool. Let's talk about that, right? Um, we So that's why it's, it's okay to feel jealous. <laughs> you know, like yeah, don't yeah. be afraid of it. Um, society, our culture, frames jealousy in such a negative way um, that we are we are afraid to even admit that we're jealous. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm saying don't do that, right? It's okay. Um, and um, if you feel like it is becoming a, a like a a negative, it's having a negative impact on your life and your relationships, um, you know. There are a lot of qualified people out there who can help you talk about that, right? Um, and can help yeah. you identify what's going on for me. Why am I experiencing this um, so strongly? Is there a way that I can not feel this so strongly? Um, and communicate, right? Uh, we've talked about the value of communication as being very helpful. Um, and if you feel like you are somebody who also suffers from anxious attach attachment, right? And know that like you are more prone to have feelings of jealousy and that that's okay. Right. Um, but there is help out there for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things like I'm trying to equate this more with like my current life. Like there's times at work where, somebody's get, get a job or like before the, we did this transition to working from home, they gave a few people some laptops uh, in order to kind of like test how working from home could work for us. And I didn't get one of those laptops. I didn't get the chance to test their working from home, which I'm probably one of the most qualified to do that for. I'm a bit, I've been a bit jealous about that. They sent me home with a Chrome box instead of a laptop. And I'm like, I don't really have a place to do the Chrome box thing. I figured it out. I'm fine now. And probably actually in a better situation because I got a bigger monitor. But that's another matter altogether. Um, but I, I identify. Not that this is about size or anything. No, it's not. <laughs> but I would have been perfectly happy working with a laptop and I could easily, you know, work with a laptop with it and I, I, I identified myself and I didn't really like I did complain to one of my leads but I wasn't doing it like the, it was more of I was expressing the fact that I was uh, upset frustrated jealous that I wasn't put into that beta test category and, and I kept saying that's just how I'm feeling that's just how I'm feeling I'm not trying to cause a conflict here. I am jealous of those people who got this chance to do this thing, which I would have, like, if you asked me, I'd be like, yes! And, and, and all that. So it's, while it's not a emotional, romantic relationship, it is an example of basically the same things, just yeah. in a, like a professional work relationship and, and things like that. I was jealous of the guy who got got our trainer job because I wanted that job. <laughs> Did I really complain to him? In fact, I was just on a call. We were talking about something. And he said, you know, uh, uh, this team lead told me that you wanted my job. I never knew that because I didn't communicate it because I didn't think I'm like, he got the job. You know, I wanted it. I was a little huffy puffy. Uh, but to myself sort of thing. But I recognized I was jealous because somebody else got the job instead of myself. And and we tried to discuss it. And, and then he kept uh, asking me about things. And I was like, uh, I don't know about. I, I, I couldn't communicate like all my specifics about it. But I did, I did say, yeah, I was jealous. I wanted your job. Am I saying you shouldn't have the job or complaining that you shouldn't have the job? No, I'm, I'm not going to do that because one, it wasn't my decision of who would get the job. And I thought I had communicated enough to, uh, to them 
saying that I was interested in the job, but apparently not, or they had already figured it out, or something else. I don't know. I didn't ask. But um, that that's another state in work where I had some jealousy, but how I dealt with it, which was more of, I'm not going to make a big deal about it because at this point, nothing I can do about it right now. I can express my emotions about it and just kind of leave it at that. Well, and, and one might say like, you know, a hindsight is twenty twenty. Like, look at how things turned out. Mm-hmm. Like, would you have wanted to be a trainer while working from home? Like, what is what would that circumstance be like? You know, and how important would that be? It may, you know, be great in your personal interest. It may be better that you didn't get the position. Like that's happened to me several times in my past careers. Like where I, you know, would kind of get bent out of shape because it's like, oh well, I would have done that, or da 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 da. And then some time goes by, and then I'm like, oh, mm, yeah, no, it's okay. I'm I'm now okay with being bypassed or you know whatever something not working out. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I'm still not okay with being bypassed on this. I'm just <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> nothing to do about it now. No mm-hmm. reason to make a huff because there's nothing to really because it won't do anything for me. True. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just for the record, um, someone in the chat thought you said that you got a a um, a bigger boner. <laughs> out of that not a bigger monitor so <laughs> i think some people hear what they want to hear i'm perfectly satisfied with the size of my boner good i'm glad yeah <laughs> that's important i i don't feel i don't feel the need to have a bigger one good great <laughs> glad we've worked that out <laughs> I was not the one who derailed the conversation. Just saying. Yeah, Philip. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, uh... <laughs> love you, Philip. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, that's so wonderful. Although he's been saying it's a very awesome thing in the in the live chat. So awesome. If you want to see what he said, you're gonna to have to look at that live chat, which I think might only be available to patrons. Um, uh, I yes. think it only co- is attached to the patron video. Yeah, mm-hmm. it would not be to the to the edited one later. Oh, hence, being a patron has benefits. It's a patron like with benefits. Listening to us talk about cat buttholes before we actually <laughs> have an episode about jealousy, gay butthole, because that's not a sequitur of any kind. Ever. Anyways, <laughs> where were we? Uh, so resources, everything. right? Yeah. So, um, so you know, as I always do, <laughs> right? Um, mm-hmm. I come with a bunch of stuff. So, uh, so I put in there some uh, some psychological or uh, some psychological articles that uh, that I drew my my. Uh, my information from um there's a a really good article down here on jealousy and a polyamorous relationship um it's from the affirmative couch uh that's really good um and then jealousy hurts love or does it right like so you know like i said before so i come at jealousy from a a strengths-based or a positive approach rather than a negative or a stigmatized Mm -hmm. approach so um also under books here, uh, Esther Perel. Um, she is a, a very fabulous couples therapist. And um, she has a book called Mating on Captivity, where she talks about jealousy as a, um, a helpful function rather than a hurtful function. Um, and uh, so I would highly recommend reading that. Um, like Gary said, um, I'll always put the ethical slut up here. Um, I'll always put opening up and I'll always put more than two, right? Like those are like very quintessential books that I think anybody who's going to be navigating any kind of open relationship should read. Um, and then, uh, the other book that I, uh, that is new to me, um, the jealousy workbook, um, I highly recommend it. Uh, to be honest, I think I'm going to dive into this too. Uh, cause I, I, I'm finding a lot of things that are really helpful, some really good tools mm-hmm. and tricks. 
Nice. Right. It, yeah, it, it always seems like the ethical slut shows up in these type of shows. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so good. It's like the base base guidebook for these type of things, right? Yeah. As, I mean, there's as, additional material, but, you know, if you're going to recommend one, start with the ethical slut. Yeah. I mean, typically, like, if, if I have a, a couple or if I have somebody who's asking me about open relationships, typically I go to opening up first um, because I feel like that's more accessible. Um, but, like, I think that uh, I think the ethical slut is, like, so good. Always important. And guess what, folks? What? That's the end. Oh. I like how we both did it at the same time. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, folks, uh, who knows? Uh, uh, well, first off, Gary. Uh, uh, Ed, do you think there will be another Landscaper Relationship episode? Um... I mean, there's always room for more. Um, we all just tell me said. We will find out in the future. But in the meantime, you can comment on our blog uh, if you want. Have any comments regarding the show or questions, comments, or concerns? If whatever you want to, uh, that you can do that over at cubsoutloud.com. Shoot us an email at cubsoutloud at gmail dot com. Leave us a voicemail, sexy, otherwise, or thought provoking. Uh, at 361 Seaball Talk, that's 361 265 8255. You can find us on various social media outlets at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. That's Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube. You can also join the Entourage chat where you can see uh, uh, various things such as uh, Gary saying Seawell 555, bringing you Analysts of Cats, the musical movie from 2019. Mm. Anyways. Uh, that's at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col to join us. You can also subscribe to our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You get very uh, 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 zazzle or uh, accoutrement over at zazzle dot insert your country localization here slash cubs out loud, um, such as the shirt that our uh, uh, sex therapist uh, um, Ed is wearing. And you can do some things like Put your name on the back, like is currently on Ed's shirt. Yes. Uh, uh, whatever you, you want, that we give you the base design, customize it as you as you please. Um, also, there's the consent is my four play shirt that uh, Gary is wearing. He's wearing the bear one. Yep, yep, yep. And various other ones. We also have a trans one for the in in that too. Um, at uh, zazzle.ca.com.com.eu.co.uk, etc., etc., etc. I just want to make sure people know, no, if you're not in the United States, there's a Zazzle store for you. I just do slash cups out loud. Anyways, moving on. Uh, you can also become a patron. We're uh, at patreon.com slash cups out loud, where in addition to... Um, getting the pre and post shows uh you get it a day early and you can also if you watch uh the video we link to on youtube on youtube <laughs> you can't do it on the patreon site you have to actually like click through into youtube to do it but it will have the live chat there as well um but you can become a patron for as little as a buck a month at patreon.com slash cubs out loud uh, you can rate us on Apple Podcasts, subscribe to us to Google Play Podcasts, and Spotify. You can find me anywhere in the internet as Box Set Box, Poppy Box, Cup Box, something or other. If you wish to talk with me or discuss any of this with me, you can find me as uh, Theater Cub 79 on most bear related sites or as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get find me online, you can pretty much look anywhere under Gare Bear 73. That's G A R B E A R 73. And Ed. Um, so you can find me uh, by my name on, on Facebook, um, on socials. I'm Unicub underscore Sex Brain Wizard on uh, Instagram and Eddie H. Cook on Twitter. Um, you can also find me on my website at EACtherapy.com um, and also on Facebook as EAC Therapy. Do we have a quote on there for him? Yes. Brand spanking new.
With that, we endorse you, Ed. Oh, mm. I adore you too. We I got a you, you, so you are, hard. You got a link on there too. Yeah. Mm. We endorse you so hard. <laughs> oh my God. I endorse <laughs> you so. I I endorse you harder. All right, all right. I'll endorse right. you to the floor. Say good night, everybody. <laughs> good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all.